We lost some really important people in the industry last month. It was yeah. like very, very sad. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesse Jane. Um, what do you think about the needle industry? Like, because, you know, there's a lot, there's that, there's this, there's this idea that there's a lot of industry. Everybody who's in the industry is on because, you know, there's that whole idea that like you could never do unless you're up because it's a terrible thing to do and everybody hates it. Um, do you think that, that there's as big of a problem in the adult industry as like it, it tends to be shown in mainstream media? Um, no. And I'll tell you why I don't think that. I think that no matter what field you're in, if you're a part of entertainment, people party. Yeah. It's what it is. You're in the entertainment business. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's just like the culture of the business? Or do you think, think it's, it's the, the culture people, of entertainment? The kind of people that are attracted to it? Yeah, it's just the culture of entertainment. It's the people that are in entertainment. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it, think about it. They tend to be more social, outgoing people. people. So socializing, going out, drinking, stuff like that. It's like you're going to events. It's like it's a very, that's what entertainment is. Right. Like you, it's part of the job. Right. It's not, and, and uh, weirdly enough, like I feel like adult has now meshed into this like, I don't even know if you can call them celebs, but it's like, you know, there's the movie stars and mm -hmm. the massive music artists. Mm -hmm. And now there's an entire world of this pseudo celeb that's YouTube, mm -hmm. right? It's like YouTubers. the YouTube celebrities and like mm -hmm. influencers and this world. So that almost like influencer, YouTuber, adult film is like all mixed together now. Mm -hmm. It's like one whole little box. They are all interviewing adult film people. They're all in somewhat connected to it or they're the complete opposite and it's more like very religious, very, very that way, right? But it's it's very meshed together. So I feel like throughout all of those, with music, with any time of entertainment, you know, it it's just a part of it, but it's very simple. Right? People like to, sex is a very hard thing to talk about for people. Mm -hmm. It's it's never been this publicly accepted uh, thing. It's, it's, you know, we're, we're socially conditioned over time with religion and the way people think about religion to, um, you know, look down upon sex that is had outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's the socially acceptable thing that has been this way for hundreds and hundreds of years. And even sex inside of marriage, people don't talk about. Yeah, exactly. So it's like it, the idea of a group of people that are willing to have sex on camera and monetize it for people who have their own fetishes and stuff like that is really a tough pill for people to swallow. Yeah. Well, that's actually a funny pun because we're talking about drugs. <laughs> but uh, the, but uh, what I'm saying is, no, I don't believe that it's as big of a problem. I think that uh, what do you think? the? I mean, let me ask you a question. What do you think the average age of a young person who gets into like going out and partying is? I mean, I started doing that when I was 16. OK, but like generally between like the 18 to 28 range, people are going out enjoying themselves, right? I mean, 20, 21, right? right? As soon as you're like legally able to go to bars. Yeah. yeah. So like the get, majority get of the, from your parents, your majority of the people in our industry are like are that age? 18, 26 yeah, going out partying. Right. They just happen to make a little more money regardless if it was adult or not. Yeah. And you know, you're getting to experiment, but these girls seem to get a little bit of fame and then things happen. And then it's like, oh, look what happened here. You know, and yeah. I also believe that like there are people in the world that happen to have addiction. So yeah. It's just we're very microscoped because they're always looking to microscope us for the negative. Right. So it's like, let's open up that door. And it's con that's why it seems the way that they want to make it seem that way. Right. It's like they don't right. want it to be like, look how great porn is. Like, yeah. let's you should go there. <laughs> like, that's not how society is. Look looking. at this person who goes does a porn and then goes home and feeds their dogs and watches Netflix and goes to bed. Yeah. Like, you don't want to glamour. I like, yeah, it's cool. You don't you don't get TMZ like routine, writing about that. My routine would be like, damn, can't get that's not that exciting. <laughs> I just make things exciting. Yeah, I don't like do that things. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I also live that part of my life. It's like my yeah. second life at this point. But so do you think that doing porn can exacerbate a drug problem? Like say you come into the industry, you might have a tendency towards addiction um, or you've, you know, you've experienced a little bit of that. Do you think that coming into porn can actually make it worse? Um, yes and no, because it's like, you know, I think that I, I'm an addict. I came in the business and I already had to the trauma. I already had the addiction. Right. Right. So I think that I think that anybody who comes into a world and makes more money than they're, they're supposed to at a younger age mm -hmm. will have the propensity to spend money in any way mm -hmm. 
it is to celebrate and engorge in that lifestyle. But then it's also the idea, though, I think the thing that people really cling to is the idea that, you know, porn is something that really takes away like your integrity and makes you feel terrible about yourself, right? Like you're doing something that you know is wrong in that moment. And so you use drugs and alcohol to like push those feelings down. Do you think that there's anything to that? Like you come into the porn industry with trauma and then being in the porn industry just makes that trauma worse. It could, I mean, if you haven't, I mean, that's the thing. It's not like people are getting into industries knowing they're being self-aware of whatever trauma. It's like, yes, of course, if you've been living You've been you're 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 born, and then as life continues, they're like this thing is a, um, this thing is bad. This thing is bad. This thing is bad. This is thing is bad. Oh, you're doing this bad thing. Then there's that guilt that lies in the back of your mind. So then when you do the thing, you feel worse because you know it's the bad thing. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't become aware that this was being told to you and that's not okay, then yes, you're gonna exacerbate whatever issue that is. And mm-hmm. drug addiction could be that thing. So I I do believe that it does happen because that's not. Um, Yes, I, yeah, of course that could happen. But generally speaking, I feel that it does take a lot of work. It does take, even for myself, it takes a lot of work to make sure that uh, I stay grounded to to be able to look at this as a profession and not just look at this as this is like just a, you know, mm-hmm. fun free for all to party. Yeah, I think I think what you just pointed out is something that a lot of people have a hard time grasping is that like everybody's different. Yeah. And everybody sees sex and sexuality differently. So you're right, somebody could come into the porn industry who was raised in an environment that they were told sex was bad and and horrible. Yes. And then they could be doing this thing and they feel guilt and shame about it yes. and that make gets worse over time. Or there are people who come into the industry and I've talked to both kinds that they come in with this, you know, same thing, taught sex is bad and they should feel guilty, but they find that it doesn't do that. And actually they feel liberated by it. Yeah. Now they're in a community of people who enjoy sex and they're not being shamed for it anymore. And they're being embraced and they're being, um, they're getting accolades for it and they're being rewarded for it. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this is actually freeing for me like yes. and they go the opposite way so i think it's just like it's who who are you everybody's different everybody's like, there's no different. like there's no like generic way of putting what the, <laughs> it's like uh it's no difference like anything it's like this industry doesn't do anything to you it's how you can handle any pressures of anything yeah and there are a lot more pressures of putting yourself out there on camera in any degree yeah so at the end of the day what it really will test where you're at yeah. And I, no matter what, and it, it's actually for me a great gauge. Like last year, being able to be self aware, it's like, oh, wait, I'm gauging something off here mm-hmm. because of the world we live in. There's mm-hmm. a lot of things that I have to like combat or be that way because at the end of the day, it's like, it's the, uh, the idea of it. And plus, like, we are a bubbled industry. Mm-hmm. It's very bubbled. It's less bubbled than it was before. It was yeah. way more tighter than it was, but yeah. it's a little bubbled. So, you know, it, a lot of inner, inner talking, inner thing. It's like a very inner, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, no, I, I don't I don't I don't think you could kind of generalize anything about the industry itself because everybody's different. Yeah. You know, me yeah. and you are sitting here sober, sober as gophers, whatever you want to say. <laughs> sober as uh, gophers. Uh, <laughs> it's a 40 <laughs> quote, by the way. It's not like I didn't make that up. OK, so somebody <laughs> actually has said that. Yeah, you didn't just make that up. Song. It's in a rap song. It's called Yup and Nope by uh, E-40. Oh. He was sober as a gopher. Oh, wow. He's like. He's like, yeah, it's funny. Uh, that is funny. So, uh, but yeah, what I mean is it's like, you know, you, you can make a choice and some people, uh, everybody's different. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? 
head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.